Hey guys, my name is Brian Storm, and this is the secret to playing in NHL 18. First, I'm going to be teaching you guys the tools of playing defense, such as the poke check, the stick lift, the other ones that haven't shown up yet. And then I'm going to show you guys how I think in various defensive situations. Next, we have the hit where the boards were my target. Or maybe it was that Best Buy ad. Then we're going to get into the defensive skill stick, also known as the metal detector. I don't think anyone actually calls it that, so please don't refer to it as the metal detector outside of this video. And finally, I'll teach you guys how to defend yourself against trash talk. Or wait, no, maybe that's not actually going to be in the rest of the video. Regardless, we're going to start things off with the poke check, easily the strongest tool that you have on defense. It's my go-to defensive move every year because it's just so powerful. As long as your player is a considerable distance away from the puck and the puck carrier, you should be focused on poke checking and stick checking. My favorite is when your opponent does this long breakout pass and I poke it before he even gets the puck, or maybe while he gets it. So if you want to poke check, all you need to do is press the right bumper or R1. You should never go for a poke check when you're too close to your opponent. Otherwise, who knows where your stick is gonna go. In many cases, the poke check takes a lot of skill to do because you need to position yourself properly and you also need to time them properly. I think this year though, the poke check may be a little too OP because I'm finding that I'm spamming the poke check a lot more than in previous years. This is probably one of my favorite places to poke check when your opponent thinks he's gonna get a good shot. It's those times where you're not really sure if you're gonna be able to poke check the puck away from your opponent. You're trying to block a passing lane and you're too lazy to use a defensive skill stick. Either way, if you guys need additional help with the poke checks, check out a link in the video description, as well as any of these other upcoming concepts that I'm going to be talking about. From the poke check, we move on to the stick lift, which is done by pressing the A button in the Xbox or the X button on the PlayStation 4. If you've been watching my three circuit video, you'll know that the computer cheats when it comes to stick lifts. But the only time that I ever recommend stick lifting is when you're within hugging distance like I'm about to show you. Because if you're any further away, why don't you just go for the poke check? Don't risk hitting them in the face. These stick lifts can give you such easy penalties. What's even better, sometimes you may notice that your stick is underneath your your opponent and that is absolutely the best time to go for the stick lift because there is no risk pretty much involved when you're in a situation like this in the past nhl games you were able to kind of get into like stick lift battles where both players would just spam the stick lift button until one of them came out with the puck but this year as you saw in the previous clip there's a little bit more penalties involved when you do that up next is hitting and hitting is way better this year as you can actually go for hits i don't hit very often in my games but the only times that i do are when i know that my opponent has absolutely nowhere to go that way i'll guarantee a hit on the hit and not a miss to hit all you need to do is push up on the right stick and usually I use the left stick and aim in the direction of where the player is as if I'm moving towards them make sure in your settings you have auto hitting turned off otherwise the game will make hits for you with the left stick and you don't want that there's gonna be a lot of interference penalties just like last year what you can do is set up a hit by moving your player towards an opponent and then switch players and your AI will go for the hit instead there's a bit of magnetism involved and AI will guarantee a hit like 80% of the time. Last year, I revolutionized the hip check in the NHL series. This year, it's back and it works just as well. The only times you should ever go for a hip check is along the boards because it kind of like pushes your opponent away from the puck and allows you to pick it up. It's crazy effective along the boards, but do not do it in open ice. There's just no reason to do it. To go for the hip check, all you need to do is press the right stick in first and then press left bumper or L1 as you're going in for the hit. That way you will stick your ass out and then push people away with it. Quick tip that doesn't actually work, find players with the biggest butts and they will lay the biggest hip checks on your players. Next, we get into the new defensive tool for this year. That's the defensive skill stick. The way it works is you hold down the right bumper or R1 and then move your right stick around so that your stick follows your motion. You can also poke check from this animation by clicking in the right stick when you are in the defensive skill stick motion. While I still find that the poke check is better than this form of the defensive skill stick, I find that it definitely still has some use. I use it very often in those situations 
situations where my opponent's just gonna run into me with the puck. Other people may use it to take away the passing lanes, but I haven't been as successful with that. In this case, if I was holding the right stick down to six o'clock, I would have had the stick behind me to take away a passing lane. I think I still prefer just being in the passing lane with my skater. Another thing that I don't know if it's a part of the defensive skill stick is the puck chop. The way you do it is you press the right stick in and then move the right stick in the direction you want to puck chop in. In this case, I choose up. The reason why I puck chop is when I don't think I'm going to be able to get the puck fast enough to make a pass. It's also really good if someone dumps the puck on you. And then my favorite part of the defensive skill stick is when you use the left bumper or L1 to block a passing lane. It is so fluid, so fast, gives you a lot of freedom to do what you want on defense. It's especially lethal along the boards when your opponent just doesn't have anywhere to go and is almost guaranteed to run into you unless he takes the time to actually back away from you to make the pass. So I absolutely adore this form of the defensive skill stick. As soon as the puck passes from you, you can let go of the left bumper or L1 and your guy gets up pretty quickly. All right, this isn't a defensive tool, but it's definitely something you guys should know about with regards to playing defense. The left trigger or L2 is the vision control button and it causes your guy to turn around while he's skating. In the controller settings, I would highly recommend turning it off and manually turning around with the button when you feel it's best to do so. And unless you're an experienced player, I would never recommend doing it in the neutral zone otherwise people will blow by you and get a breakaway there are a few other defensive tools but they're hardly ever used outside of blocking shots and board play which i'll talk about here in just a second the two controls i did not have any clips for are initiating net battles where you hold the y button and tying up player sticks where you hold the a button and unless your name is the ai just do not touch those buttons because you can easily get penalties with them. All right, now I'm gonna let you guys into my head by showing you how I treat defense. I think there are four different zones, four different phases of defense. The first one is the four check, defense in the offensive zone. After that, it's neutral zone defense along the blue line. That was the least important. Then you have the breakout defense, and after that is the cycle defense. Breakout and cycle defense all being in the defensive zone, of course. With each of those waves of defense, I treat defense differently. And it will only work if you're using my strategies, which is also in the description of the video, because I set my AIs to think like how I want them to. When it comes to four check, my forwards are as aggressive as possible to give my opponent as little time as possible to breathe. It makes him make a lot of mistakes like I did with my sentence there. And the most important part of of the four check in my opinion is micromanaging my own bathroom micromanage promote synergy hit on debra get rejected I'm also here to promote synergies. Oh, no way, that's Hockey Ultimate Team, I'm sorry. But what I do is I position my players, my AIs, to take away the passing lanes. So when I feel that one of my AIs are in a good spot, I leave them alone and I switch to a different player and put them in a different place where I feel like I'll be able to accomplish that. As you'll see here, I leave the AI in front of the puck carrier alone because this player that I was using wasn't really in a good position and instead I focus on taking away the passing lane in front. Again, if you want me to go in even more depth, I have a four checking video that I'm sure will be able to help you out. And at this time, if you guys are enjoying the video, you're finding it helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for even more videos like this. Next we get into the neutral zone defense because uh, your four check isn't gonna work 100% of the time. When it comes to neutral zone defense, my first objective is to stop the opponent from crossing the blue line. If there's more than one person along the blue line, I move up a little bit and force him to make a tiny little move where he'll move to the left or to the right, but his AIs will end up going offside. It's the best thing to do when you're in a one-on-two situation in Ishal as well if you're playing threes. When your opponent's along the boards, you can hold the Y button down or triangle to initiate board play, though I just let the AIs do it. Just move your player towards them, then switch players and your AIs will just do it for you just so that you don't start a fight randomly. And then the last thing is when you're by yourself one defender, don't be aggressive with the poke check or the hit unless your opponent doesn't see it coming. Usually my tactic is if there's two guys with one guy, I'm going to be super aggressive, try to do whatever I can to take the puck away. And then the second guy, I'm going to be super passive and only rely on poke checks. Now we're going to get into the breakout. What happens when your opponent enters your zone? My main focus here is to stop you from taking high quality shots and force you to the outside. Going back to this image, it's this pentagon-ish like area in the defensive zone. 
You do not want your opponent to ever take a forehand shot in this area on his own. This is an angel 13 or 14 where you can cut into the slot and just take a backhand the side that you came from and always score a goal. So if your opponent's on the backhand, leave him alone unless you can poke it. If your opponent's outside of this area, don't worry about him unless he's trying to get into this area or he's trying to make a pass to someone in this area. One timers can probably go a little bit further out to the left and to the right depending on how they are aimed. I know this sounds easy easier said than done, but this is the objective of breakout defense. Let me tell you, the bottom 70%, I just made that number up, of the Chell players rely on scoring off of the breakout or off of the rush. Keep them to the outside and they will never get a good scoring opportunity. But usually I just play as passively as possible until it looks like my opponent is gonna take a dangerous shot and then I go in for a poke check to stop him from taking that shot. And whenever he gets too close to me where it looks like I can get a poke check or use my defensive skill stick, I do just that. In many cases, you can just buy a lot of time by standing in front of your opponent and have your AIs back check and come back to help you out with defense. All right, now we're kind of entering cycling territory, the last phase of defense. This is where pretty much every player in the game is in your zone. You'll find that very similar rules apply to this phase as the breakout phase. You want to stop your opponent from taking those high percentage shots. Since this is the last phase, you'll most likely have already forced your opponent to the outside, and all you're doing is stopping your opponent from making passes or taking shots in that high percentage area. There are some tips specific to this form of defense though, like never chase your opponent behind the net. In addition to that, always try to take away the passing lane and the shot at the same time. You'll see me do that when it comes to DSD one-timers where I'm not sure if the guy's gonna take a shot or if he's gonna pass it, so I kinda go both ways and then converge on the puck carrier. If anything's happening along the boards, just leave your AI alone with the opponent. There's no reason for you to be controlling that person. Take away the passing lane instead and find the most dangerous person on the ice. It's definitely not the guy in the corner. And then your opponent is going to be driven to insanity trying to find a way to get through your defense. So when it comes to defending the cycle, you have to know how to block shots. And that's with the L1 or LB button. You have to know that if your opponent is standing in this position, he's almost always going to shoot to the left, even though technically to the right would have been better here for a redirect. Because goalies just do not want to stop this shot going across. So you have to be in the lane and get ready to block it. If you guys don't know exactly where to score, or how to do it. I'm going to be coming out with a video sometime in the future to help you guys out with that. Here's what it looks like from my point of view. When I go to block this shot, usually the puck ends up in front of me and may lead to a really easy breakaway for me. Finally, the last way to block a shot is by pressing left bumper and right bumper at the same time, or L1 and R1. And it usually blocks the low shots, but the problem is you can get a lot of penalties by doing this because you'll trip your opponent like I do here. A lot of people like to do this, but in my opinion, the recovery time is way too slow for it to be effective. You can block passes this way too if the puck is going across the crease for a one-timer. But honestly, the greatest thing about it is just looking at your player as he slides down on the ice. Even better is his reaction. Look at Zetterberg here. He's smiling and then he's like, oh man, what am I doing? And at the end, he's very disappointed that the ride is coming to an end, just like this video. So that'll do it. If you guys have any questions relating to defense, I would love to help you guys out. So let me know in the comments below. And again, check out some of my other videos for additional tips.